Alright, Shalom. I'm gonna give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Waha Raka Kwadash, Barakatham, to the elect. I wanna say double honors to the apostles and others of Great Millstone, Shalom. You know, um, just gonna be replied to the brother GMS Soul uh, Melody. Um, I believe it goes, I forgot the name of, uh, Oh, yeah, choose your path and walk in it, you know? So, like I said, this is a reply. Uh, without further ado, this is Joshua chapter 24, verse um, 9. Then Balak, the son, and brothers could read this to basically, um, I like this chapter because, you know, Joshua is basically digging Israel's ass, man. You're going to either serve heathens, these other lords that didn't help you out, or you're going to serve the... The one true power, Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, that was always there for you. All right, so this is Joshua 24, 9. Then Balak, the son of Zephor, Zippor, king of Moab, arose and warred against Israel and sent and called Balaam, the son of Beor, to curse you. But I will not hearken unto Balaam. Therefore he blessed you still, so I delivered you out of his hand. And ye went over Jordan. And came unto Jericho, and the men of Jericho fought against you, the Amorites, and the Perizzites, and the Canaanites, and the Hittites, and the Girgashites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites, and I delivered them into you, into your hand. And I sent the hornet before you, which drave them out from before you, even the two kings of the Amorites, but not with thy sword, nor with thy bow. And I have given you a land. For which ye did not labor, and cities which he built not, and ye dwelt in them of the vineyards and olive yards which he planted not, do ye eat? You know? And that spiritually Yahweh by Shim Yahweh Shah, he, he he basically gave you this truth for free, man. Here it is, you got a people want to serve Christianity, but you know, that was forced upon you. That was through slavery, man. You know? You equate you know, like our people's messed up in the head because they equate the Bible with Christianity, man. You know, they said that's the white man's book. No, it's not the white man's book. It's the book of you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. You know, but Esau, he likes to push that, all right, because spiritually he knows that we are the Israelites. And once we read this, all right, we're going to come back to our Heavenly Father, man. If you read this in, in truth and sincerity, man, you know, and, um... You know, the blessings of the Heavenly Father was given to us for free, man. You know, it was actually a, a prophecy that after three days and a half or 350 years, the spirit of life will come, will enter back into us, man. Also going into Ezekiel 37 chapter, man. You know, so here it is. In this captivity, our people are, uh, you know, um, enslaved, you know, and in this aspect, I'm talking uh, spiritually. All right, under these other nations, man, serving all these other gods, you know, that have uh, uh, no value. You know, our people, like, for example, even us brothers in the truth, man, you will have, you know, you know, Slocky, I lost my uh, train of uh, thought, but I'm going to just keep reading. And I sent the hornet before you, which drave them out from before you, even the two kings of the Amorites, but not with thy sword, nor with thy bow. And I have given you a land for which ye did not labor, and cities which ye builded not. All right, going to prove, uh, further prove my point, what I just said of how, you know, you received this uh, truth freely. And ye dwelt in them of the vineyards and olive yards which ye planted not, do ye eat. Now therefore, fear Yahweh and serve him in sincerity and in truth, and put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt. And serve ye Yahweh. So that's what we're telling our people. You know, coming, you know, throughout the elect of our people. Because we know most of our people are not going to get it. Two thirds to be exact. Okay. So we telling our people here. You know how the scriptures say. You know, put away the gods that you served in Egypt, man. Because we come into a time. Like, you know, the apostles coined this the year of prophecy, man. So we come into the time where the Most High is going to deliver us out of spirit, spiritual Egypt. You know, in this time, you know, you have a lot of our people, all right, 
still celebrating Christmas, still celebrating the Roman gods and the Greek gods and the Christianity. All right. Like it says in Micah 2 and 10, arise ye and depart for this is not your rest for it, it will destroy you and serve you, Yahweh. You know, because when Most High comes back, he's coming to kill everybody, everything that's not his. All right. And that's physically, I mean, that's spiritually, um, um, you know, most importantly, spiritually. And if it seems evil unto you to serve Yahweh, choose you this day whom ye will serve. Whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites, in whose lands ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve Yahweh. And the people answered and said, God forbid that we should forsake Yahweh to serve other gods. For Yahweh our power, he is he. For Yahweh our power, he it is that brought us up and our fathers out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage in which he did those great signs in our sight in our sight and preserved us in all the way wherein we went and among all the people through whom we pass. You know, it's you know, and for us brothers, we can contest to that, man. In the world, all right, we didn't know who we was, you know. We were uh, you know, carried to and fro with every winded doctrine. Then you come to the truth, you find your meaning of life. You found the answers that you were um, you know, looking for, man. Alright, but in this world, alright, you're basically uh confused, alright? Which this is Babylon, the land of confusion. So you're confused, alright? In this world, because this world pushes confusion, man. Homosexuality is confusion. All right, bestiality is confusion. The celebrating of these wicked holidays and then putting the stamp of Christianity on it, all right, or putting a Bible on it is that's that's confusion, man. All right, thinking that you're so-called uh, uh, Haitian, thinking that you're Dominican, thinking that you're Peruvian, that's confusion. You know, but when you come to this truth, you find out. Um, you know, why are you at the bottom, man? All right. Why can you never get ahead? You know, you, you figure out uh, your meaning in life. You know, how can you get out of this predicament? How people get rich, but they're still in the, under the, uh, the hand of the wicked. You know? So it says, serve Slaki. Um, but as for me and my house, we will serve Yahweh. And the people answered and said, God forbid that we shall forsake Yahweh. To serve other gods. For the Lord our power. He is it. That brought us up. And our fathers out of the land of Egypt. Out of the land of bondage. From the house of bondage. And which he and which did those great signs in our sight. And preserved us in all the way. Wherein we went. And among all the people. Through whom we passed. And Yahweh drove out from, from before us. All the people. Even the Amorites. Which dwelt in the land. Therefore, we will also serve Yahweh, for he is our power. And Joshua said unto the people, Ye cannot serve the Lord, for he is in holy uh, power. And that word Lord in all caps means Yahweh. That's why I've been saying Yahweh. For he is in holy God. And that word God means power. It says he is a jealous God or a jealous power. He will not forgive your transgressions nor your sins. All right, so Joshua was explaining to the people, look, if you come to serve the Lord, you can't be wishy-washy, man. You know? You can't be wishy-washy, man. Hey, the scriptures even say how, um, you know, basically uh, a man that is double-minded is unstable in all his ways. So you can't trust a man like that. All right, so the Lord is not going to be dealing with you if you're double-minded. For he, will, he is in holy power, so he is separate. He is the highest. He's a jealous power. He will not forgive your transgression nor your sins. All right. And that's a cut to, you know, people that, um, you know, I was watching the uh, GMS for the most high. He reposted it. Uh, the brothers out there in D.C., man, confounding that that uh, nut who think he knows something, man. That anti-Messiah, man. He will not forgive your transgressions nor your sins. If you will forsake the Lord and serve strange gods. All right. That guy was worldly. If ye forsake the Lord and serve strange gods, then he will turn and do you hurt. 
And he did that guy hurt, man. He just don't know it, man. Him cursing Yahweh Shai, that's, he did himself hurt. The scriptures say, he that hate me love death. Then he will turn and do you hurt and consume you. After that, he had done you good. All right. After he tasted the heavenly gift, if we turn back again, all right, the Lord said, I swear in my wrath that you should not enter into my rest. And the people said unto Joshua, Nay, but we will serve Yahweh. And Joshua said unto the people, Ye are witnesses against yourselves that ye have chosen, ye, that ye have chosen you, the Lord, to serve him. And they said, We are witnesses. Now therefore put away, said he, the strange gods which are among you, and incline your heart unto Yahweh, the power of Israel. You know, so serve you this day, whom you will choose, man. I mean, whom you, whom you will serve. You know, it's coming to a time, man, where Esau's pushing that chip. You know, Esau's pushing his new world order. So ultimately, all right, it's going to be a life or death situation, you know, physically. You know, because it's always a spiritual, a life or death situation, as Joshua just explained. But it was uh, soon be a uh, physical life or death situation, man. As written in uh, Revelation 13, I believe 17. I would say he, uh, that don't take the chip, or uh, he calls it be put to death. You know? Those, you know, time, uh, you know, to get serious about this thing. This is Daniel's chapter 1. In verse, uh, let's start at uh, four. Children in whom was not blemish, but well favored. And, you know, just a brief summary. You know, actually, I'm going to just start from the top so brothers can get a better understanding. Daniel chapter uh, 1, verse 1. In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem and besieged it. And the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand with part of the vessels of the house of God, which he carried into the land of Shinar to the house of his God. And he brought the vessels into the treasures house of his God. And the king spake of unto Ashpenaz, the master of his eunuchs, that he should bring certain of the children of Israel and of the king's seeds and of the princes. Children in whom was no blemish, but well favored and skillful in all wisdom and cunning and knowledge and understanding science, and such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace, in whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. You know, hey, like uh, the elder uh, Ariala, um, he spoke about, you know, a long time ago, uh, when they went to go visit the apostles, of how many times in different kingdoms before this, you know when a um when a king would uh besiege a place, they would take you know the basically the goodly men, the men that had uh potential that they can teach and that would add to their society. So that's what Nebuchadnezzar did unto the children of Israel here, and the king appointed them. This is verse five, a daily provision of the king's meat and of the wine which he drank, so nourished them three years. That at the end thereof they might stand before the king. Now among these were of the children of Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, unto whom the prince of the eunuchs gave names. For he gave unto Daniel the name of Belteshazzar, and to Hananiah of Shadrach, and to Mishael of Meshach, and to Azariah of Abednego. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not devour himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Okay, so here it is. You got um Daniel, alright, being amongst the uh the wise men of uh, you know what I'm saying, Israel, that Daniel uh chose to, you know, try to reteach. You know, that he felt that uh Nebuchadnezzar thought that you know, he would be a, a asset to uh, society. So Daniel, um, and a few, it says, But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with a portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he requested the prince of the eunuchs, you know, 
um, of the uh, eunuchs and the prince of the eunuchs. And unto Daniel, I fear my lord, that king. Oh, it's locking. I'm going to just skip, you know, for the sake of time. Uh, Daniel chapter 1 and 11. Then Daniel said to Melzar, whom the princes of the eunuchs had set over Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, prove thy servants, I beseech thee, ten days, and let them give post to eat and water to drink. Then let our countenance be looked upon thee, and the countenance of the children that eat of the portion of the king's meat, and as thou seest, deal with thy servants. So he consented to them in this matter, and proved them ten days. And at the end of ten days, their countenance appeared fair and fatter in flesh than all the children which did eat the portion of the king's meat. It says, Then Melzar took away the portion of their meat and the wine that they should drink and gave them posts. And as for these four children, God gave them knowledge and skill in all learning and wisdom. And Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. Now at the end of the days that the king had said he should bring them in, then the princes of the eunuchs brought them in before Nebuchadnezzar, and the king communed with them. And among them all was found none like Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Therefore stood they before the king. Okay? So the reason why I brought this account out is because, you know, Daniel and his uh, brethren, uh, Ananiah, um, Mishael, and Azariah, you know, they um, chose to serve the Lord and not, uh, you know what I'm saying, eating of the king's meat and not basically taking part of the king's orders, man. And therefore, Yahweh Shem Yahusha lifted them up above, um, lifted them up as the most wise in the whole in that whole kingdom, man. You know, when you read to uh, Daniel's uh, second chapter, only Daniel was able to uh, break down the king's um, the king's dream. You know, you know. So hey, man, serving Yahweh Shem Yahusha has the most benefits. You know, serving Yahweh Shem Yahusha has the most benefits. You know, like like I said, man, our people in this kingdom. We catch nothing but hell, man. You know, but in this truth, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, you know, gave us a way out, man. You know, the scriptures say, search the scriptures for ending, you think you have eternal life. You know, so you can't, you can't beat that. You know, and as well, you catch nothing but hell, you know, uh, fall into the snares of so called white man, man. You know, you know, uh, always being uh, constantly uh, paying bills. You know what I'm saying? Paying for the centers like water, which is the fault. You know, that's what you get for serving Esau, man. You know, but in this truth, serving your how about Shimmy Yahweh Shai, truth, sincerity. All right, you get a chance at, at uh, viewing life. All right, this is uh, Deuteronomy 11 and 26. Behold, I set before you this day a blessing and a curse, a blessing. If you obey the commandments of Yahweh, your power, which I command you this day. Okay? So that's a blessing to obey Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah, like I said. You know? You know, because in the kingdom, we're going to, the Most High is going to put the words in our inward part, man. Alright? But, you know, at the same time, even before the kingdom, you know, the Most High is dealing with his men. Alright? The elect. You know, because he chose a remnant, all right, in whom, you know what I'm saying, he would appoint hairs, man, in whom those that has kept his words, man. You know, and the scriptures say, knowledge of wisdom shall be the stability of thy time, man. So because those men, those elect whom, whom he chose, all right, decided to give up their life now for the knowledge and wisdom of the Heavenly Father, all right, in them last days, they're going to be fine, man. All right, when you get Job the fifth chapter, it tells you that. You know, uh, Psalm 91, all right, those men, all right, going to be covert from the storm. They're going to be A-OK -okay when all hell breaks, uh, you know, through in uh, society. Last precept, this is Psalms 23 and 5. Psalms 23 and 4. Yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, 
I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of Yahweh forever. So, dwell in the house of Yahweh with uh, sincerity and truth. All right. Uh, you should never fear the worst. You know, we should never fear the worst. So we following you how by Shimia was shot. Hey, so choose you this day, man, whom you will serve. You know, like Joshua said, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. You know, you're going to see the blessings that the Most High has given us, man. Through Joshua, I brought out Joshua, Daniel. All right. And even to this very day, man. All right. How we are happy that the society is going down, man. All right, because we following the Lord, man, and we we uh, you know, we looking forward to the rewards that the Most High will give us, man. All right, Romans eight and uh, get that real quick. Romans the eight chapter, man. You know, because if we follow the Lord, and the scriptures say a brother is known in adversity, man. You know, so we follow the Lord now. We then sure gonna follow. You know, the Lord gonna look us up. All right, He said in Matthew the twenty fifth chapter, when I was sick, He clothed me, man. You know, so He said we're gonna enter into His rest. But those that didn't clothe Him, basically those that didn't, uh, you know, what I'm saying, push His word. You know, when it was uh, no faith. You know, what I'm saying, they didn't push His word in the in the world of uh, darkness, man. Those that didn't carry the Lord's torch in the world of darkness. All right. The Most High is going to um, do away with them, man. He's going to say, depart from me if I never knew you. The Spirit, Romans 8 and 16. And if children and heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs. That's Lockie. That's Romans 8 and 17. And if children and heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Yahweh Shai. If so be that we suffer with him. That we may be glorified also with him, man. You know? You know? And, uh, you know, in the book of Daniel, that was kind of a suffering as far as him. You know what I'm saying? Uh, basically, the king probably, you know, felt disrespected. You know, just roughly, uh, I'm not adding to the scripture. I'm just saying how, you know, because Daniel and his uh, brethren didn't follow the king's decrees, man. All right? But at the end of the day, Daniel was lifted up. You know? Hey, so with that, you know, I'm not going to prolong prolong this video. Lord willing, you Akin was edified. Shalom to the elect. Shalom.